Hey everybody, welcome back. <clears throat> this is iteration 3 for part 5 of module 1. We're going to write a function called compute summation to n. Given a number, compute summation to n returns the sum of sequential numbers leading up to the given number beginning at 0. Although you don't really need to begin at 0 because a sum won't really care if it starts at 0 at 1 or 1. But anyway, um, if n is equal to 0, or sorry, if n is equal to 4, uh, it should calculate the sum of 1 plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, and return 10. Um, you might be thinking to yourself that there are probably a great number of edge cases that we would want to uh, consider, so let's throw out some assumptions. We're going to, assume, we're going to assume, uh, that the number's positive. That'll make things a little easier to do. So, let's pseudocode it out. Let's say create a sum variable, return sum variable, and we want to uh, iterate from 0 to n, essentially, and then add, uh, what would you say, add index? The trouble with common, with a uh, pseudocode on this is that we don't really, uh, the current value doesn't really apply to anything, so we'll say add current index uh, to sum, and that'll make sense in a moment. So variable sum is equal to zero. Last thing we're going to do is return sum. Iterate from zero to n. We'll use a for loop. Say i is equal to, hmm, we could say zero. And in fact, we probably should, just because it's not going to change anything if we start from one or zero. But if we were to compute the summation to n of zero, uh, perhaps we would want to make sure, eh, we're getting into the details too much without actually having anything concrete to go on. So let's just consider that we'll start at zero and change it up later if we need to. i is going to need to be less than or equal to n because we want the last value of i to be n because we're essentially going to be using i as what we're adding things up as. So given that, let's say that we change the value of i to something uh, different. Let's say variable value is equal to that. And that way we can say add current value to sum. So value is less than n, and then value plus plus. Also, it never hurts to see an example of a for loop without i as the variable that we're using. So close the for loop, add current value to sum, sum plus equals, and we've named it nicely, so we'll just say value. And that should compute the summation from 0 to n. So create it, iterate from 0 to uh, equal to n, which is our input parameter and then add to sum whatever the value is and then return sum at the end. And we're in good shape. So thanks for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.